Kirby, the Preakness, and then went over to Saudi and wasting the $20 million Saudi Cup. And so he's got a lot of class. He's really got a lot of class. And now is coming back. Took some time off, obviously, after that long trip over there. Not been seen since February 21st. Asmussen and Santana coming back with some nice, nice Churchill works, which tells me this coat is ready to run. And I think the class advantage that he brings is going to bow well in his favor. And that's the number five horse max player. The number two horse fearless is going to be your post time favorite. Probably this gelding is nine to five on the morning line for Todd Pletcher and Irad Ortiz coming out of the Oak line handicap. Now I can say this already. Uh, with this one-on-one buyer that uh, Fearless put down last time, I can say that already today, I think in the fourth race, and let me make sure this is correct, uh, ladies and gentlemen. In the fourth race, the number eight horse, no, I was thinking this horse probably came out of that race. I, I was thinking in my mind, and it was Oakline, so it's not the the uh, Oakline handicap, so I want to see if that horse flattered this particular horse. But anyway, Fearless is is going to be tough. The, the 101 buyer towers over anything in this particular race. So I think I say I think this gelding by Ghost Zapper is going to be very very tough. I'm going to I'm going to include him in this pick five sequence using three horses: the two Fearless, the five Max Player, and the seven Harper's First Ride. I do like the seven Harper's First Ride best. However, I'm going to choose. I'm going to include those in an exacta as well, and that's what I always do. I like to point that out again. If I'm using horses in a pick four, pick three, or pick five sequence, I am going to use those box those horses in an exacta. Sometimes even roll them in doubles, but I like to give out the pick five because I'm just basically trying to give out the maximum amount of races I can. I don't want to do individual races because you know a lot of people you know, don't bet that way anymore. They, they, they use multi-races, horizontal and vertical wagers. So like I can say, I, I like to do pick fives and then sometimes you can figure your way out through them if you want to pay a pick four or a pick three. So I always do that as well as like I say, play exacta. So let me make sure I get that right. So the two horse fearless, the five horse max player and the seven horse Harper's first ride. Race 13, the final leg of this pick five is the black eyed Susan. It's grade two these days, $250,000 for Phillies three-year-olds. And 10 is going to run. 10 are going to run. There's no scratches. That's good. And I'm going to start with the number eight horse, The Grass is Blue. This three-year-old filly by Broken Vow is taking blinkers off. Chad Brown is obviously known as a turf trainer, just like Baffert is known as a dirt trainer, and you know, but they get wind sometimes on opposite surfaces is what they're known for. The grass is blue is exiting the gazelle, the grade three gazelle. And after winning this uh, a, a non-graded stake at Aqueduct at a mile and an eighth, this filly added blinkers. And when she added blinkers, it, it nothing seemed to go right. Now, she wasn't really bet the competition. It was probably some tougher competition. But even though her buyers increased, her results did not. So now Chad is taking the blinkers off. And now I think this is going to be the trick that's going to turn the tables. She's been working at Saratoga, which tells me that maybe Chad has some plans for her down the, you know, in when the summer comes up. However, I think today uh, the move uh, that grass is blue is making with the blinkers off is going to be very, very telling for this Philly here. The number one horse, Army Wife, is a Michael Maker trainee, and Joel Rosario will ride. Is actually coming out of the Gazelle as well. Now, the grass is blue with six to one in the Gazelle, and Army Wife was fourteen to one. Trevor McCarthy rode this filly by declaration of war that day, but now it's going to switch to Joel Rosario, and that usually means the horse is this horse is going to take money. Normally, especially when you have the style that she has. Looks like she closes a little bit. She's getting the rail. The last time she employed the rail, she was, she was victorious at Gulfstream Park. So that does not seem to bother her. And this time, instead of the one-turn mile at Gulfstream Park, she will be going two turns here at Pimlico. 
she's going to be very, very tough. The number one horse, Army Wife, a second use I'm going to use in my pick five sequence. The last horse I'm going to use in here is the 10 horse Beautiful Gift. This is a Bob Baffert trainee, John Velasquez. We'll hop on this Medaglia Doro Philly. Drawn far outside, coming from the Santa Anita Oaks and the Santa Isabel Stakes. These Santa Anita horses who come east always seem to get bet, always seems to get respected, not so much because of Baffert or who trains them. It's because of their, their buyer figures seem to be higher. The track is faster in in California. And and and, and even though it, it this is kind of weird, and I want to throw this in there, you know, I'm an old fogey from way back when, you know, when Crystal Water is and Crystal Water and Ancient Title and those horses and Vigers ran when and, and when I believe that horse racing and handicaps were really, really, really horse racing, especially in Southern California. But it seems like the racing has digressed in Southern California. But nevertheless, horses, you know, the fields have shrunk, but nevertheless, it seems as though Horses, whether it's in the, the the female division or the male division, they come out of these races at Santa Anita with these huge buyer numbers. And they, they're they always a factor. If not in the running on the track, they're always a factor in the wagering. And Beautiful Gift is not going to be any exception. Like I say, she has pretty much the best figures here. Like I say, the outside post may be a hindrance. She's going to have to run a little bit. She's going to have to run a little bit to get position out of the gate. But if she does, she's going to be very, very tough. And I don't want to have her left off my ticket. So I'm going to throw her in there. My ticket is just $54. So I think that's affordable. I think this is very, very hittable today. Like I said, I could use other horses, but I will not. I do like the grass is blue on top better. So hopefully if I if I'm alive in the last leg... I can get the grasses blue home, and I'm quite sure my pick five will be a lot better. So in closing, $54 ticket. Uh, should I go through these once again? Yeah, let me fly through these once again just to give it to you again one more time. The ninth race, the five, Victory Kingdom, and the 12th, Gotta Go Mo. The tenth race, the five, Seek, uh, Street Loot, and the eight, Euphoric. Race 11, I have three choices, the two seasons, the three Alda, and the six Mia Martina. In race 12, the Pimlico Special, I have Fearless, the two, the number five Max Player, and the seven Harper's First Ride. And in the Black Eyed Susan, three choices, the one Army Wife, the eight, the Grass is Blue, and the nine Beautiful Gift. So good luck, everyone. Hopefully this is, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's a pick five that it's not going to change your life, but it should put you in position so you can play, you know, play your favorite game for another two or three months very, very comfortably. So once again, thank you for listening. My name is Kenneth Motri, and I'll see you again on another episode of Thoroughbred Ticket. Take care. <laughs>